<laughs> okay, uh, let's start. It's already like 8.30. I'm going to share the slide. Uh, just for information, uh, our coordinator uh, made some improvement on the CI, especially in the marks distribution. Uh, later one confirm everything, then I will reshare in our e-learning and update for uh, all of you. Okay, now we're going to continue with our class. Uh, last time we stopped until these pages, 26, and today we're going to go to our next uh, sub-module structure for multi-core computer structure. But let's do some recap so that you will remember uh, all the things that you already learned before this. And those who just joined us today, uh, uh, it's good also for you, especially uh, I did not yet upload the recording video for our previous class. Okay, uh, this is all objective. What we're going through for our module one is component of computer, component structure and function. We already until this computer evolution uh, level hierarchy example and summarize. So every time in class, I'm going to highlight as well which part is important. So whenever I said it's important, please also remember and highlight uh, maybe in your notes. Uh, because normally it's going to be like come out for your quiz test or final exam. So over here, we already go through about the overview on computer architectures and computer organization in terms of these two differentiation and how you're going to design a computer is related to the hierarchy architecture and how a computer works is on the organization <coughs> and then <coughs> we also take a look into the family of a uh, computer sorry wait uh, i need to pay a call but <laughs> Cuman, I said, kenapa dekat computer saja?
<coughs> sorry <coughs> prof Naomi just called me uh, due to yesterday yesterday presentation with parliament so we need to speak up uh, actually because we are dealing with the development for uh, a big project for government so maybe uh, I can share as well uh, for those who are interested who are interested in like exploring uh, being as developer or might be uh, joining like as part of uh, members of company you can contact me uh, you have my phone number you have my email uh, I have Tim uh, actually your senior they also learn from zero starting from year one they already train starting with uh, industrial project uh, <laughs> different with uh, COA subject sorry so I just share because might be some of you like thinking UTM just a place for you to learn a subject for you to graduate uh, getting a transcript and certification it is not actually you can gain a lot of salary as well all the lecturer have their grants their project and same goes to all my students actually i also share with them starting year one uh, actually from digitology subject uh, they join me and i ask them to create a company under utm excite okay we have utm excite whereby utm excite will have student uh to create a company they're going to give you a seed money like five thousand for you to uh develop a prototype selling your product and so on so it's good for you and then before you graduate sim all my students they did not yet graduate but they already have money they already have company uh a lot of project government project as well so imagine actually uh after you graduate you already have company and then you can attach with others company uh as well as permanent but inside uh you have also part-time or might be side income uh from your company as well so not only in terms of business you can go into research if you like uh, writing you can get a paper publication because all of this will make you unique okay if you a uh, graduate for flat as well a lot of students as well uh graduate for flat but what make you different uh if you just join like competition it also normal because everyone join competition you get certificate what make you different is when you have your own copyright how to get copyright so you need to work with a lecturer just a member as well you can be a uh, part of the copyright members uh, you will have the copyright id and you can put into your resume you can also like helping only editing uh, pictures or might be uh, a grammar in terms of writing a paper so you can also publish with the lecturers and the other seniors so by doing that you can imagine that actually your resume your cv will be different with others okay so think about that if you are interested i can also link you with your senior maybe you can uh, join them and as well we're going to also guide you maybe who knows uh, before you graduate uh, you're going to have your own company you have your own research uh, copyright papers uh, publication and a lot of other things in UTM okay so go back to our subject <laughs> sorry again uh, we already learned this uh, last our class and why you need to study coa and last time i already give you a hint that we have six altogether definitions first is our pc workstation mini computer mainframe uh, supercomputer and lastly mobile device so these six uh very simple 
complete the tab, you need to remember in terms of the keyword. Because normally, we're going to give like one mark question. So this is type of one mark question whereby you need to uh, write back the definition. So it might be the, the differentiation between supercomputer and uh, mobile device. So as long as you know the keyword of differentiation between all these six, then you can get at least like one marks for a question. Uh, in our previous class as well, still recap, we have take a look into the main component. We have three main component, uh, actually like including like input, output, if you want to separate, it's going to be four. But input, output can be like one component. If you think that it's different, you can separate it to be four. We have memory. Memory is storage. We have a processor to process. And another one, we're going to have input device and also output device. And this is the basic flow that is good for you to remember. Input, output device, process and storage or a memory. And this is the uh, favorite question whereby a processor is a brain. <laughs> this is very favorite uh, question. I guess it will be come out in your quiz as well, I guess. A uh, processor is a brain of your computer. Okay. So remember, last time we learned this diagram and I said to all of you that actually we're going to have three men but same goes to your body you have head you have a uh, hand you have a uh, your leg but how they are connected to each other with a bus system okay you're going to have a van salodara and so on so all of this is a major uh, processor storage input output and it's connected through our system in uh, connection but when you have a connection as well as your van you can see that uh the your blood your blood your blood are uh, flow through like uh, following a flow might be kenapa dia macam ni you are you are having a van so from let's say this is your brain to your heart you already have the system bus this is your system bus this is your van so this is a system interconnection but how you instruct your van or the blood to flow so might be uh, i don't know the flow because i'm not a medical student so maybe the blood will be flow like this so how this is all the program or instructions said that the blood will flow from brain to heart uh, so if you only have system interconnection but you did not have a program or instruction how the blood will flow or might be like it will be like messy like this go here go there so it will be like messy around and you will be also collapsed and how about the data the data is your blood okay the one that you're going to move from one to another or maybe you want to send oxygen oxygen from heart to your brain so this is the data and how it's going to move it's going to program instruction and in between you have all the main component and this one is very favorite question you're going to have three main uh, entity or component in your processor alu cu and register and sam goes to all other component they will be having inter uh inter interconnection between each other as well inside okay that's why after this you go deeper last time we already look into you can see in cpu we have all these three men just now but you're going to have interconnections uh, inside our cpu okay so i guess we directly go to our module 1b uh before that okay i just want to highlight 
that um, all of the table last time I mentioned it's important for you to memorize um, although I don't like to read uh, all the informations but I'm going to highlight what is important so like CPU you need to know what is the keywords because this is the favorite question that like, might be asking about what is their function what is CPU function they're going to give you a b c d or might be if it is under a uh, subjective question it will ask you to write what is the function or the task for CPU okay we have several table here you can see table under CPU and table for a component uh, on computer okay now we're going to go slightly deeper into our multi-core computer structure so here uh, we have a general contemporary uh, computer have a multi-processor again this one is the newest previously it's all if you see remember we are only having a single processor but now today most i guess it's very rare to find single core computer we have multi-processor so all processor reside a single chips inside uh, each processor are having this just now you remember including your inter uh, component interconnections uh, between each other eh kenapa dia bergerak wait ah very okay and this is called as a core okay one single unit core we're going to have all these three okay and then the use of siapa <laughs> lagi the use of multi layer of memory is called as cache memory okay wait just a three minutes wait ah Okay, uh, so this is under multi-core computer structure. We have uh, a multi-layer of uh, memory is called as cache memory. I think this recording is very messy later on because there are too many interruptions. I guess I need to uh, close off my phone first. So they're going to WhatsApp me. <laughs> okay, so here, this you can see if under your motherboard. That's why motherboard if broken is very uh, expensive for you to replace because everything is inside. So you can see that if you have a processor chip here, actually we're going to have, depend on your computer. If you have like three core, five core, seven core, uh, it will be having all inside this but 
inside one single call if you remember just now it's mentioned that inside in one single call we're going to have alu uh cu where is our cu cu and also our register okay and in between actually we're going to have a lot of other like cash instruction cash and so on okay later on in next next module going to go deeper and deeper okay in terms of like inside core uh inside a processor chips what will be inside deep and deep okay we don't have any uh previous question asking you draw no okay we didn't ask you to draw no need for you to remember how to draw all these pictures same goes to all pictures here's no need you just need to remember what is inside so actually if you remember then you're going to know uh how to elaborate in your own words okay and uh just now i mentioned about function function is important your body as well you know that our kidney are having to filter your toxics, your water, whatever things it's filtering function for your bodies. But let's say like brain, what is the function to your bodies? Same goes to our computer. We have a different type of function. In terms of just now I mentioned, a function will be instruct, give you instruction how uh, the program will be running example uh, when you open your microsoft uh, microsoft uh, powerpoint let's say this is the button here all of this is like a component in your application this is all the uh, component in your application but all this component all this module when you click you're going to give them instruction so when i click this so it will say it will be like a uh, full screen uh, full screen and run the play uh, powerpoint and you can see as well this is all the component available inside uh, but uh, inside like pain how actually pain will be functioning so when you click the mouse the input device so it will be draw something okay so this that is a function computer need to have function so how the connectivity between a functions in your computer we have a control mechanism for us to control the data storage how are we going to store is it going to be permanent storage is it going to be a temporary storage so a function to control your storage a function to control your data processing how you're going to process your computer depending on might be several type if you serve in terms of different type like movie what will going to be processed and so on and in terms of data movement so we have all together four and uh, sorry three three things that you going to control okay in terms of function we're going to have four terms but all this will be controlled by your control mechanism okay we uh, control uh, your data processing control your data storage and control your movement data movement and again just highlight for you that actually each of the function, uh, each of the table shows here is like task, the function. You need to remember, okay? Like data processing, what is their task? So data processing, uh, I go for uh, the control first. Control will be process, control the process, move and store data means that it will control this is the main controller it will be control your process where is your process here it will be control your movement data movement and it will control your data storage okay that is the task for a controller and then 
for data processing, it will process data in variety of form and requirement. Uh, for data for data storage, short and long term data storage for rebuild and update, and data movement move from data between computer to outside world. Okay, that is important for you to memorize. Uh, because uh, as a lecturer, we don't have choice. We're not going to ask you a question of scope from your module books. Okay, so we will come out everything in all here uh, in your slide and as well as your module book. Okay, let's see the next is under program. So program actually a sequence of steps. When you have a whole program, okay, you have a whole program, a lot of that uh, programming inside, maybe C programming, maybe Java and so on. So this is a program written in, let's say, dot C, C, uh, C++, okay, CPP, uh, or maybe on Java. And you can see, actually, it is following step by step. Later on, if you are using a Microsoft Visual Studio, Microsoft Visual Studio Code, Microsoft Studio, you're going to see that actually the instruction will be read one by one, line per line. We uh, are not computer, not going to jump directly to like line 100, not going to like uh, randomly select, okay, I want to read from uh, line 200. No. That's not just thing. Same goes to us whenever we have a box. It's very rare for us to directly jump to the third uh, part of the box. We normally like go through like from first page until end if we want to reading unless we just want to like see what is the content inside. Of course, we're going to randomly look inside the box. But to read and to understand, we're going to follow a sequence. So every step, uh, every, for each step, a computer function will be executed line by line. Finish execute line one. Then it will be pointing to the second line. <clears throat> After finish, then we will execute. We will run. If let's say at this line two, it's mentioned uh, open PDF okay inside your program open pdf so it will execute first it's not going to be okay i'm reading without doing nothing i move to the uh, third line still did not open the pdf no okay program will read go through step by step but every time it's finished reading every single line it's going to be execute okay sequence step but every time you move to the next step it's going to be execute the previous step so each operation having a different or new set of control signal in needed a unicode or instruction provided just as add move uh, subtract uh, and a lot of others. This is all the instruction or command that normally you're going to use later on, okay? You're going to add two numbers. You're going to move two numbers into your register. That's why it's important for you to, okay, uh, okay, for you to know the module two under your digital logic subject. Okay, when you have free time, go through back, do all the exercise inside your module two digital logic subject, just to make sure you will be very familiar with numbering system. Because in your COA subject, although we are doing and this uh, programming, uh, assembly language you can see here this is assembly language one of the line instruction given at 10b what is b this is binary 
one zero D. This is decimal. You not going to get twenty because binary one zero is two in decimal. So although you are going to execute using your computer in term of your lab, in term of your exercise and so on, but when you are dealing with your final exam, uh, your test, we don't, we're not going to provide you with a computer. So you need to run and execute by your brain, by your mind as well. So by having this single instruction, you're going to need to know the numbering system. You're going to add these two. Okay, so every single instruction you need to know and how you're going to execute that. A hardware segments accept a code and in issues the control signal. Uh, okay, this is also uh, not a favorite, but sometime it will be coming out because I can see that some of the semester there is a question coming out from these two, especially differentiation between two. Okay, differentiation. Uh, normally, we're not going to ask like what is uh, inside of hard wire, but different between hard wire and software. But who knows, as long as you're going to see that this slide is also important. So hard wire, of course, it we related to something hardware. That's why you can see that when you are having, okay, you compare in your normal activities life, when you are using a uh, cable, cable lens, okay, lens, uh, your lens at home, L -A -M, okay, your lens at home, compared to Wi-Fi at home, so, uh, we not compare about the speed uh, in terms of unify the brand, uh, the package that offer. No comparison between hardware with a uh, signal that a uh, software. Okay, hardware and software. So when you have hardware things, it is much more faster compared to Wi-Fi. Why? Okay, why? Uh, again, it is not comparing between what type of hardware, uh, like wired, of course, like your previous uh, copper, copper, okay, our land, uh, we have a copper type, we have a fiber optic type, we're not going to look into this because we know that Unify now today using a fiber uh, and the speed is very high, okay, we're not going to compare with that, but or land in also software like YB Wi Fi, we can see that uh, we compare between these two a lot of uh, differentiation in terms of speed. Okay, that's why you can see here in terms of hardware, it's very high in speed and software. When you want to run something like you execute uh, instruction one by one, it is less speed. Okay, but you can see that whenever you have a wired already, you already connect your PC to your LAN cable uh, compared to the things that Wi-Fi, you can move because a Wi-Fi can uh, go along of your house. But when you have something cable attached, it's very hard for you to move. Uh, or we can say that images it inflexible to change because you already attach it okay it's hard for you to change but the things that mobile and also uh, compared to software the one that program you write code of course it's easy for you delete this one single line and you replace with a new line so easy for you to reprogram. So that is the very uh, favorite comparison between the other three, uh, the other two. Sorry.
So the other two is also can be uh, written as a differentiation, but this is the very easiest and common differentiation between hard wires and software. So hard wire high speed and inflexible to change, while software is less speed and easy for reprogram. The other than that, you know that hard wires is a wired computer hardware and use a sequence aromatic and logic function. While software control signal through uh, your codes and need interpreter to speak missions. What is this? What is the meaning by this is whatever programming that you are using, you can run. Okay, you can run whatever type of programming when you run in Visual Studio Code in your computer and so on. But actually, your computer only understood machine language, okay? Same goes to us, okay? Same goes to us. We might be only understand Malay, okay? And maybe English, okay? But uh, I just speak a common. Or uh, if let's say we only know Malay. But everyone can speak to me using English or might be using uh, Mandarin, uh, using Tamil language, uh, Japanese or whatever type of language. Yes, I can understand, but I need to have a interpreter or the one uh, that helped me to convert from Japanese language to Malay. So that is called as interpreter, okay, a converter for me to convert from uh, something that I did not understand to a machine language or to Malay so that I can understand, okay. So that is the meaning by this statement. Okay, let's move. Sekarang berapa sebab saya dah tutup handphone. <laughs> Uh, okay, I continue uh, between hardware and also software. You can see that this is a programming in hardware. Whenever you already code, okay, when later on, of course, you're going to familiar with Android. Uh, not Android, sorry. Arduino. Okay, Android is your type of system phone, okay. Uh, Arduino, you're going to have a Raspberry. Raspberry Pi. This is not your raspberry fruit, okay? But this is the hardware that you will be bumped into later on in your learn when you are want to call, uh, do your PSM, final year project later on. When you are dealing with development, sometimes you are dealing with hardware. So this is all the hardware that you need to program, okay? You need to program. Before you go to hardware, before you going to program to your Arduino, you're going to have a software or program, okay? The one that very easy for you, uh, you want to find your box, you can delete, you can change a single line. And then uh, you test run, okay, program function well. It's easy for you to do things, but when you want to have a complete program, a uh, complete set of system, you need to program it into your Arduino. You're going to program it into your hardware. So that is called as programming in hardware. So once you already program, uh, normally like I am a electrical student from engineering. So we call it as we burn. Okay. We burn this. We burn this with our programming. After we already burn, we detach them. Okay, means that we already said, okay, what will be uh, Arduino doing? So once you already program, it will follow whatever program that you send. So if you want to change, you need to change from your software. Okay, you need to change your software and then you need to ribbon again. So it will be too slowly and it's hard for you to change directly. Okay. <clears throat> so programming in hardware, you need to have a data and see what is the result. Uh, 
sequence arithmetic in logic function will be inside the one you uh, remember last time you learned digital logic subject when you have your logic gate. So what is the result? Okay, same goes in your uh, Arduino actually. We have several uh, logic gate inside. Last time you just connect them uh, and see like from 0, 1, 0, 1 what will be happen. But actually in our real life, we're going to also include with a software with a programming to instruct uh, all the functions uh, inside our one single circuit okay and then programming in software we're going to have an instruction code the in uh, interpreter if needed okay if needed if not you're going to just directly data and then arithmetic control function and then result so this thing you're going to push to your control signal uh control signal and directly so you can see that actually you are needed this kind of thing uh to add on on top of your programming in hardware okay so because actually we already stop 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 uh, just now in this morning so i will go directly to the next computer evolution this one is quite bored by uh because this is like history subject you're going to see all the previous version of processor all the previous uh, version of computer and for me it's boring <laughs> okay but you need to memorize the functionalities not memorize the years okay normally we're not going to ask you this because this is not history subject this is computer subject that's why we will ask you in terms of technical and most of uh, that is the functionality what they offer for you okay this is the historical development it's very boring for me same goes to you i guess no need for me to read the slide because you can read okay you need to know the first thing that is our first generations of computers so you look this how big the previous computer you like the first generation called as nom von neonam model okay von neumann <laughs> pronunciation is von neumann okay so this is very big computer of course it's very hard for us to move the computer it's not mobile or in terms of movable so in this early electronic computer machines programming was uh synonymous with a connections of uh, wired and plug okay so you can see we have a lot of wired as well here plug and we uh attach them together so very hard for us to move okay and okay you read this person all store program computer have come to known as bonema models or we going to use using a bonema architecture model And this is, if you remember, in our previous class, I said these three characteristics is important. Normally, we will ask also in subjective question whereby you need to list three characters. Okay, another hint for you, although I already give hint to your senior, sometimes they forgot. Okay, there is a hot history. Okay, there is a history of your senior uh sometimes they forgot about marks okay marks uh they answer it's correctly okay they answer all correctly but they said that why i did not get maybe example here okay we give like three okay three only three marks why they did not get full three marks they provide uh, the characteristic of von Neumann models, especially for the first generation is vacuum tube computer. 
it's provide uh the consist of three uh, four main sub a input apple control uh and also memory okay it's really similar for our uh processor so another one it's provide with program is stored in memory during execution yes all correct but why i did not get full mark because my answer is correct your problem is you only list two but you need to see the rubric there it's three marks so you need to give at least 3.3 correct point and the one uh, might be keen for you if you look here the marks please make sure you give more than this if let's say it's give three means that for us as a lecturer we need to write one two three so at least three point for us to give mark uh it's rare for us to give like two one no okay normally we will like uh, okay this is one mark this is one mark this is one mark this is the rubric for marking so if it is three give four at least because the more is better we're not going to say that why you give wrong answer and we will deduct no the bet the more answer provide is better we're going to pick which one is correct okay if let's say that is uh, like one mark sometimes we give like six mark so you need to know oh might be might be it is total of six point but if you see as well in terms of difficulty of question might be the sentences is long uh, long okay long long sentences and the uh the question is slightly uh difficult so means that one point is two marks one point is two mark one point is two mark so before your answer before you answer the question please check the marks okay the marks of the question and you tackle with that because sometimes it's very like uh your uh your senior said that uh, sayangnya it's not full marks just because you not provide with uh more answer okay so this is the architecture for von neumann model again uh we rarely ask you to draw but there is some of question but not from this chapter one we provide you with the diagram with the structure we remove this we remove this we put a b let's say this one is c so what is a you need to write what is b you need to write what is c so in terms of drawing is very rare but to know what is exact uh component in the structure you need to memorize okay so here is your uh input output device same goes to our flow input and then you can see here this is input we have cpu it's similar you can see we have cpu that's why this is our input go to our cpu in our cpu we have a uh, ca uh, aromatic logic uh, unit alu okay this is actually alu and our control unit cu we don't have register last time for the von neumann machines maybe that is the slightly different between our existing uh, computer because our existing now we have a uh, register so we go to cpu and in between cpu can as well have a connection to our storage okay this is our storage or our main memory and after that all of process happen we're going to have the output connect back to our output okay so you need to memorize what is the function available in structures of uh, von neumann machines
Bonnement bottleneck. Okay. So this is the Bonnement bottleneck. Uh, I think uh, in terms of connectivity between my memory and your CPU. And conventional store program computer have undergone many incremental uh, improvements over a year. So you read by yourself over here. And in terms of a first generation non voinum <clears throat> first generation, first adding a processor and parallel processing uh, is uh, approached by von Voinam model. So adding processor uh, can increase the computational throughput and parallel computer improve speed by doing multitask at one time this one as well i already explained in our previous or first class how actually they are connected so you have a uh, cpu memory uh, input output you have connection between each other using your bus system using your interconnection system but actually interconnection system as well like your van it having several other tube inside okay we cannot like one move to all so in one single van you will have a uh, salodara or van for uh, process data only for only process address for only process control so that's why we did separate it uh, in terms of data bus address bus control bus okay so this is a processor it's very huge here uh this is in terms of theory uh, rarely we ask you as long as you know what is the functions of the processor parallel processing is the one that we are used currently that's why uh, there is a subject called as hpp hppc yeah. high programming i look i don't put that uh there will be in fourth year i guess you can choose uh for the subject in terms of parallel processing uh we are following a pro of uh what a uh, parallel process parallel processing method now so they <clears throat> fourth generation processor uh this is the one uh that the latest and newest and the evolutions of processor Okay. Again, you can see and read by yourself here because this is just history and evolutions of Intel X68. We use Intel normally in our laptop and computers. How it evolves until like uh, hot core here and differentiation between each other. Okay, uh, so we're going to go directly to our computer level hierarchy, but maybe we take five minute break so that you have a recap. Maybe you can go through all of these evolutions while uh, we take a break, okay? Five minutes only.
Okay, let's start again. Uh, let's continue so that we can uh, try to finish as many as can. So I'm going to share back my screen. Okay, we're going to go to computer level hierarchy. And again, uh, I'd like to read so you can read uh, this overview or instruction into introduction for our subtopic number five, computer level hierarchy. And remember, last class, I already informed you, this picture is very important. Okay, this is very, 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 very important. Okay, not only for you to draw, but each of the levels, you need to know what is the component. Okay, we will start with the level zero, level six we will start with the level six to bottom until level zero what is the task and function and uh, level each level okay all together we have seven level okay seven level including zero for our virtual machine layer so the most top level the highest at level seven the top is level six whereby it is a user level now you are a user level you are looking at the webex you are looking at the user interface of webex so you execute webex and you see the user interface now you are at the level six and most of us very familiar with level six the user level so instead of this is the uh, task normally use it more user level you need to know that user level level six is doing executable program okay so it is doing the executable program next is level five higher level language Actually, before you can open, before you can see this WebEx, it is actually executed by using, just now you execute, right? Uh, module, uh, level 6, execute before you execute. Actually, it is written in higher level, level language. Uh, example might be, I don't know this uh, WebEx, what is the back layer of the program? uh program by the programmer let's example like java okay java actually it is written in program but after uh, our computer execute 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 and it's compiled with the exe we run only level six here but before that is actually a levels of a program language whether it is c c plus plus java and so on okay next bottom we have assembly language the one that we will learn here in our coa subject okay that is a lower level language before you can learn higher level language and this level uh will be uh, uh normally we're going to execute uh, instructions or program directly <clears throat> bottom we have a system software level whereby we need to execute so we need to have a software we need to have a platform okay example we run into our microsoft window uh, or maybe we run it using our visual studio code linux and so on as long as we have we run in a program so actually it is a system software level level script uh, bottom of that, <clears throat> uh, we need ISA uh, to run our software. So it's because of instruction of particular architectures uh, of our machines. Written language, uh, this no need a uh, compiler, interpreter, or assembler. Level one is the control level. Control you need for us to do decode, execute, instruct move the data along our system 
and this consists of either microprogram, your software, or also a hardware. Okay, both of these two. And the last one, the one that you learn in your first semester, whereby we related to our digital logics. That's why digital logic teach before COA subject. Because that is the basic. Without having digital logic, you cannot run your program. Okay? So digital logic. Digital logic level is the level where you find digital circuits. Same goes to like this example of circuit. Consists of the one that you learned last time. Gates, connections, wired and so on. Okay, those component complements of mathematical logic. The one that you already learned. And gates, zero, zero become one. Eh, sorry, <laughs> zero, zero become zero. <laughs> okay. So, zero, 01 becomes zeros, 10 zero becomes zero, and 11 one one is 1 for end gate. So, this is all the basic level, all together seven levels that you need to remember. Okay? From level zero to level six, you need to remember all. And lastly, yes, I guess we can finish this our modus one. Uh, because this one is very uh, simple for you and normally we already go through before you go to buy computer you're going to see this advertisement the flyers you will set to the shopper i want to see what is inside the computer what is the uh, component inside so example of this it's showing that it is pentium 3 and the type of RAM is SDRAM. And we have the cache level 1 and level 2. How much it's provide. And in terms of hard drive, how many gig? Yo, is it enough? I don't think that we have this kind. Of... Uh, we don't have CD-ROM yet. I guess <laughs> we don't have CD for our PC and SO laptop nowadays. How many ports available? What type of ports? Monitor, how big the screen? And so on. We have several other, especially our sound card, uh, voice, your microphone, and so on. That's why you can talk. Uh, people can hear. So, based on this, okay, I go first to the, uh, to explain this, um, advertisement compared to our mathematical calculation here so i go back to here first i go through directly so this is your brain okay the microprocessor that you need to first look what type of brain what type of microprocessors that you're going to buy next is your system bus how faster your system bus to connect one system to another. Okay, how faster the system bus. So the computer, the larger memory capacity can run larger program and greater speed. And your RAM is actually random access memory. I remember, is it we learn here or we're we going to learn the next subtopic? Okay, we're going to have two RAM and ROM. Okay, but in this uh, slide, we only learn RAM first in module one. And then we have cache memory, whereby we put a temporary memory in our cache. That is more faster uh, compared to RAM. Next line, we're going to have this one is our uh, type of dynamic RAM. We have this cache level smaller, uh, is more faster and faster than L2 cache. Because later we will learn as well as a pyramid. Okay, that pyramid also have several level. Where is your level 2 cache? Where is your level 1 cache? So which one is more nearer to your CPU, your bread? So the more nearer, it will be more faster. 
but now you just need to know uh what is all detail from your uh advertisement here next we have a storage of 30 gig 30 gigabyte we have this one is uh your rotational speed this type of hard drive use uh cd rom and then type of port okay we have a lot of several port if you are familiar with like a projector we will need a serial port for us to use a projector serial port send data serial or pulse along one or two data line okay this is also important for you to know differentiation between a parallel port because sometimes it looks similar okay sometimes it looks similar but you need to differentiate between each other usb plug and play and lastly you have a system bus Okay, that is on your advertisement. I go back to your mathematical just now, your equation. You need to memorize this. Okay, all, no exception, because I believe that you already also uh, learned several in your digital subject as well. But now I guess uh, we add on several like Peta and Femto. No exception, you need to memorize all the unit symbol and uh, the measurements. Okay. And normally we will like only uh, ask you in terms of several questions, uh, in terms of speed and capacity. Example, speed is depending on frequency. And you already learned in your science subject. Frequency equivalent to one of a period. Okay, this is temperature, uh, tempo or period. Period. Uh, what else you have? A uh, storage normally in byte. So time and space, uh, in terms of second as well as a space of micrometer. So this is all you need that normally you are dealing with a computer before you buy a computer or when you uh, want to um, uh, enhance your computer capacities, uh, computer speeds. So you need to do a calculation as well. Okay, very simple calculation. And yeah, we already finished and you can try to look all the question uh, for your module one. Uh, okay, any question? Okay, we will uh, meet again next week. But before next week, I need to share, uh, reshare again the CI, new CI from our coordinator. And please scan your QR code. I will check your attendance every three weeks because last semester i did not check for digital logic subject one of the student actually i supposedly bar but i didn't bar so people questioning me so this semester for coa subject i will check every three weeks i will check if you like uh having lower percentage below than 80 percent especially online you actually just need to like attend and I don't know what you are doing. Uh, so maybe I will follow our previous class might be uh, method. So I will share next class. What is the method? So uh, as long as you achieve 80%, then it will be okay. Okay. Either the wise, uh, our faculty will ask me why I ask you and permit you to go final exam. Okay, thank you class. Uh, after this, I have workshop to attend. Uh, if you have any question, you can always ask me and uh, you can better for you to call me directly, okay?
So thank you. Uh, take care and bye bye. Assalamualaikum. Okay, thank you.